What is going on everyone? It is Mark here with another video and wow, it's been a while. All these lights, this camera, this microphone, it has been a while. I've missed you guys. We've had some technical difficulties in the past couple of weeks, but we are back. We have a schedule of things to film and we will do an, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do that said schedule. But today I have an interesting video. This question comes out a lot. What are the main apps you use on your computer kind of on a day-to-day -day basis? Not like those one-time use outlier kind of things, but what do you kind of use on a day-to-day -to, -day to make your life a little bit easier while using your computer or that you use to do things that you typically do for this YouTube channel and other activities on the computer. So I'll go through the list. I've got six apps here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six apps that I kind of use to make my life a little bit easier. Some on the Mac, some on the PC, and I'll go through that with, with you guys right now. Um, and the first one is Streamlabs OBS. So lately, if you've been paying attention to my social media, I have been streaming uh, various games, Fortnite number one, number two, Call of Duty Warfare, number three, uh, just recently, Cities, Skylines. It's a great game. Anyway, Streamlabs OBS is an application that allows you to stream yourself onto multiple various platforms. I use Twitch, but this can be YouTube, uh, Mixer, this can be, I don't know what any other ones, Facebook gaming, uh, but I, I do use Twitch. I feel like it's the most established platform, plus I'm not really streaming to a huge audience. I, I typically have six viewers, and that's on a good day. So if you're into that kind of thing, please, I'll leave a link down in the description. Go check it out, follow if you will. Okay, moving along, uh, this is kind of a smaller little application that I do use on a frequent basis. This is memory clean. So these Macs here, they don't always clear the RAM very, very efficiently. It kind of lingers, especially with Chrome. Chrome is like the worst for RAM hog. Um, anyways, but this application literally at the, at the click of a button will clear your RAM or as best as it can, depending on what you're actually using and not using. Very, very easy. You're gonna have uh, on the top right corner, you're gonna have a little icon there with, with it. Uh, you simply click that and clear memory. And what you'll, what you'll notice is that whatever RAM's available, it will clean it up for you and you'll have more RAM available for you to use. Like I said, Macs have a very hard time kind of clearing its RAM, so this kind of gives it that little bit of ease and clears things up a little bit easier for it. So it does kind of alleviate some of the stress on the system, um, and it's something that I had for a very long time and kind of got into a habitual thing. So moving along, and this is something that this, this Mac is specifically meant for, uh, it is my video editing. So I'm a Final Cut Pro X video editor. Uh, for my style of editing, uh, I, I only use a very small portion of how powerful that software is. I'm a very cut, paste kind of slice and dice editing style for these videos. It's very simple. Uh, so, so a lot of programs can do that, but Final Cut X is such a powerful beast, especially if you tie it into like a, a sister program like Motion. Wow, boom, bada bing. You've got yourself an incredible, incredible editing tool. But like I said, for what I do, these, these shots right here, uh, and then a little bit of B-roll, I use a very, very small percentage of that. Final Cut Pro is what I use. It is perfect for what I use. It's so easy for what I use and so optimized that that is the reason I use this. So moving along to the next software that I do use and is conveniently today's sponsor, PDF Element by Wondershare. Uh, thank you again. I've done a video on these guys before and I will leave a link to that main video to kind of give you that whole in-depth review. Just right now, very quickly, I'm gonna go over some of the key features that it does offer. Uh, so PDF Element is a great kind of Adobe like PDF tool. Uh, you can create, edit PDFs like you typically would, but this has a little bit of a twist on it. You can do some very basic things like um, like highlighting, creating boxes, annotation, um, th simple things like that, but you can get into a lot more in-depth things like rotating images that are already there, replacing images, editing the text of, of the actual PDF document. The, some of the best and most interesting features that I found of uh, PDF Element that I actually do use, I've used this for work now, is kind of creating forms. So you're able to create drop-down menus, lists, checks, uh, filling in the blanks, that kind of stuff. But another great feature here is what they call OCR text feature. So what that does is if you have an image or a scanned copy of a PDF, you don't have a soft copy of that PDF, you can actually convert it into a PDF that is now editable and usable like a typical PDF would be. So that is a very, very powerful tool. So I've got three more apps that I would like to share with you very, very quickly here. Photoshop, this is what I use to do thumbnails. Um, I use like literally 0.001% of the capability of Photoshop. What I literally do is I take a screenshot of the video, I then 
put it into Photoshop, Control A, select it, Control Copy, Control New, then I create a smaller file of it and then I shrink it to that size and if I'm feeling crazy, what I'll do is I'll put a vignette. Woo! Fancy, dancy. Um, once or twice I'll like put a phone in my hand. I'll typically like hold, say I have this and then I'll just copy paste a phone into here and then hashtag clickbait. That being said, I identify when I am clickbaiting in the description or the title. Um, so, you know, I'll leave that there. Next thing, Discord. This is the modern day Skype, if you will. Um, this is because of, of playing all these video games now. Uh, it kind of allows you to use channels and groups and phone calls as well as the game. Um, what I do with it, playing video games, I'll call up a buddy, ring a dang dang, he picks up or she picks up. Bob is your uncle and we are playing games and having a great time. And the last application I would like to bring up to your attention is Mirrors. It's essentially an application that just kind of lives in the background of your computer and allows you to utilize your desktop actually usefully. If you have applications opened or windows open, um, you can actually just slap them to the side like you typically would in any other normal computer. For some reason, Macs don't think it's important to have this functionality. I know Apple's pushing the whole full screen thing that you can have various items on, but this is just so much easier. Some applications really suck in full screen and this just allows you to organize your window a lot, a lot better. Quick recap here, we have Streamlabs, awesome for gaming, Mirror, memory clean, great to clean up the bogged down RAM situation of your MacBook, uh, Final Cut Pro, you know what, editing videos is fun. Then we have PDF Element, thanks again for sponsoring the video and you can now create awesome PDFs and edit them and use, it's powerful as hell. Uh, then you got Photoshop because thumbnails are important for YouTube videos. We've got Discord because communication, key, and mirror because it's actually useful and it makes your life a lot easier. Anyways, I hope you liked that video. If you did, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button down below. If there's any questions you have on these specific applications or if you want me to dive down into a little bit more deeper into any of these things, please feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. But for now, hope you liked that and I will see you on the next one.